Mother Youth. I want to share a little bit of a story with you. Um, some of you know uh, Ashley, who is the person I'm going to tell you a little bit about, but I want to share this from first hand, first person university student at the University of Florida, okay? One of the top five party schools in America, as you know. Um, let me give you a little bit about background on Ashley if you don't know her story. Ashley, uh, her parents got divorced when she was young. Um, she kind of sided with her dad who never remarried, had no other children, and they kind of didn't want anything to do with God. They very much didn't want anything to do with God. They didn't like church, Christians, God, or anything about that. They kind of hung out together. Mom got remarried. Mom was a believer. She remarried a believer. They had a son, so Ashley has a stepbrother. He's a believer. They're sort of the Christians. Ashley and dad over here are sort of the non-Christians. And Ashley, Ashley's living at Florida with her boyfriend. They share an apartment together. And about the middle to the end of the fall semester of her senior year, she goes to class. She comes home from class because she feels sick. And when she gets home from class, she finds her boyfriend um, in bed with another girl from school. And they have a blow up of massive proportion. She kicks him out of her apartment and puts a notice up at the school saying, I need a roommate for the last semester of college, for my final semester at the University of Florida. And a girl figures out, I need to save money because I'm getting married, so I need, this looks like a good living situation. So she signs up and she gets this new roommate. And that's where we pick up the story. I have permission, by the way, to read this journal, so don't freak out on me, okay? Um, this, I have permission to read it. And if you don't know Ashley's story, you'll understand why it's okay uh, in a couple of minutes. But I'm just going to jump in on January 7th, okay? And only as a a university student could write this, it says all caps, happy final semester of college, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. And then she begins this story. Can I just read a tad of this to you? It's a pretty amazing uh, journey. Okay, so M, that's his uh, initial, is officially out of the apartment, and I'm so glad he's gone. Though I've loved him for the last two years, and I still do love him so much. But I'm renting out one of the rooms because I really do not want to live alone. I rented it before winter break to this quiet girl named Krista. She seems sweet, but turns out she's a fruitcake. <laughs> she's into all that God, um, and I know we've got a mixed crowd here today, uh, S-H-I-T. And I don't want to ju- jump around this, so if it, if, I hope that you'll just give me grace on that. And if your kids are in the room, that you'll help them understand that. But this is real. This is a real person, okay? And if that bothers you in some way that she would say that word, I know none of you would ever say that word, but if it bothered you to some degree that she did, I'm sorry. She um, is not with God, not walking with God. Um, she's into all that God blank. But I'm pretty sure she's more wacko than mom, Jacob, that's her stepbrother, or Jeff, her stepdad. I asked her what she did over winter break. She said she went home and then came back early to go to a conference in Atlanta. I made the mistake of asking her what kind of conference it was. Apparently, it was the greatest thing she's ever done. She said that God really changed her at this passion conference. Well, I do not link passion in God, but whatever. She said she got to worship God with over 20,000 college students. So yeah, that was the best thing she's ever done. She needs to get out more, a whole lot more. (laughs) But so that's the new fruitcake. Jeremy is her guy, and that boy hates me. We worked on a group project together last year for Children's Lit, and he made it clear that he thinks he's better than me. He'd get along well with my mom. He's a little holier-than-thou Bible thumper. I really hope fruitcake's not as crazy as he is. Otherwise, it's going to be a long, blanking semester. School this semester is going to be a breeze. I'm taking four classes and three are electives. That was smart planning on my part. I'm going to party like it's 1999 this semester and have the time of my life before I can no longer hide behind the fact that I am in college. LOL. That means laugh out loud. We'll be back later. Five days go by. Em and I are back together. Well, kind of. I do love him so much. He came over last night. We hung out with J and C and C and F. We were all just watching, uh, drinking and watching a movie. The lights were out, and of course, him and I quit watching the movie right after the credits. We were amazing together. He did not say anything about us being officially together again, but he did spend the night. He said he had a class, and so do I, so I have to run. Skip a few days forward. Okay, so it's been a few days since I've been here. 
I've been so busy. I went running today. I was running past one of the buildings in the complex, and I see M's car, and then he comes out of, names this girl's apartment. I just kept going. He had on the same clothes he had on when I saw him at C's house last night. He told me last night he still needed a little time to figure out what he wants, so I was like, that's cool. But there's only one reason he would sleep at that blank's place last night. I cannot believe he slept with that blank, blank. I ran an extra three miles and finally came home dripping in sweat. Mind you, it's 40 degrees outside. I'd already taken off my jacket. I came in and went straight to the kitchen. Walking past Kristen, pulled a beer out of the fridge and ice cream out of the freezer. I jumped on the counter, drank my beer and ate my ice cream and just cried. Krista asked me if I was okay. I said, blank, no, I'm not okay. Fruitcake then grabbed another container of ice cream out of the freezer and sat down at the table. Why the H-E-double-L do we have so much ice cream in January? Seriously, there are three more containers in there. (laughs) I really wanted her just to leave me alone, but since she was not going to do that, I asked her what was wrong with her. I mean, she obviously does not drink. She does not go to clubs. She asked me what I meant, so I asked her why she was the way she was. And all she said was God. She said it was her goal to live a life that Christ would be proud of. I laughed. I couldn't help it. But the fruitcake was serious. I asked her if she's ever slept with Jeremy, the guy she's dating, and she said, no, when she gets married, she'll be a virgin. Wow, those are still around? She said they've been dating three years. I've not dated a guy for three weeks and not slept with him. I cannot imagine three years without sex. The girl is a fruitcake. She then said it was because she had a personal relationship with God that she was saved. I do have to admit she's different from the Christians I know, but she's still a fruitcake. But then she asked me why I was so upset, and I told her about M wanting more time apart than seeing him come out of this other girl's apartment. I cannot believe how much one guy can mess me up. I told her about all the blank he's put me through and how he used me and cheated on me. And you know what? She did not give me all the Christian crap that mom always gives me if I mention him to her. Fruitcake just sat there and listened to me vent. She did not criticize me when I was done. All she did was say, wow. And she said, Ashley, I'm really sorry that he's done that to you. Then she did it. She asked me if she could pray for me. I laughed, jumped off the counter and said, I need a shower. After my shower, Krista was gone, and I just sat on the couch and cried. I love him, and I hate him. How is that possible? I should only hate him. I cannot figure Krista out in her little Bible-thumping world. You know, she actually reads her Bible, like a lot. I see it move around the apartment from the kitchen to the living room and even to the office. I should be the enemy to her, the one she wants nothing to do with, but she does not seem to think she's better than me. It also seems that this God and Jesus stuff are real to her. I do not understand the fruitcake at all. January 18th, I won't read you the entry, but just the first line's hilarious. The fruitcake and I went running together today. I cannot believe she actually kept up. Who knew? Christians could run. Amazing thought. (laughs) January 19th. Okay, so I have to find out what makes Krista so different from every Christian I've ever known. She does not look down her nose at me. She's really nice to me and acts as if she just wants to be my friend. It does not make sense. No one ever just wants to be Ashley's friend without getting something in return, especially not a Christian. God is not for people like me. And Jacob's supposed to be the only Christian who does not judge me, and that's only because he's my brother. January 21st comes. 14 days have gone by. Okay, today I did it. This morning, Fruitcake and I were in the kitchen, and I asked her why this God stuff was so important to her. She told me it was because he truly loved her, and he was her closest friend. So I asked her what she meant by that, and she said exactly what I said. She said, God is all about love, and God's love is the greatest thing ever. So then I was like, why do you live all perfect like you do? She laughed and said she was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but she was forgiven. She said she was at this passion conference, the 20,000 people with no lives thing in Atlanta. She said she was reminded that God loves not only her, but also the rest of the world. He sent his son to die for us all. 
basically the Easter story. Mom used to make me go to church all the time. I hated it. I quit going when I was in high school and able to stay at dad's place all the time. See, God is not for people like me. God is for people like Fruitcake, Jeremy, and their friends. I am way too screwed up for God to care at all about me. Fruitcake had to go to work, so we had to end our conversation. She said she would love to talk some more when she got home tonight, and I told her maybe. Well, after she left, I was on the couch when M came over and apologized for um, blank, 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 blank. Um, but as he said, we are not together anymore. But he did say when he saw me running away, he realized what a big mistake he made. He said he loves me so much and I'm the only one he wants to be with. I really want to believe him. We've been through so much together, but can I forgive him for sleeping with that blank again? Besides, he's not going anywhere in life. He's a professional student. I asked him to leave. I told him I could not do this again. I am moving on with my life. He left, and I cried and cried for a very long time. I do not need first, middle, and last name. I can live life on my own. Besides, I can get any guy I want. Who needs M? Page turns, and the color changes, but it says still January 21st. She continues, okay, so I'm back again, S-H-I-T, it has been a crazy day, crazy enough to make me come back here twice on one day, so no actual homework got done today, I cried, shopped, cried, ate, cried, ran, cried, and ate again, so you get the point, there was a lot of crying today, I did not answer my cell literally the 17 times he called me today, well, I'm on the couch when Fruitcake got home, she sat down and asked me if I wanted some ice cream, I could not help but laugh. We sat there in silence for a really long time, and then I asked her how much God was going to punish her for living with a screw-up like me. She just looked at me and said, Ashley, God really is not like that at all. He really does love us. I told her I knew all about this God stuff, and I was way far too gone and too screwed up to even think about God's kind of love. I am not a religious nutcase like my mom or her family. As much as I love them, they are crazy. She just said, okay, you need to hear Louie talk. He's better at this than I am. So I asked who Louie was, and she said he kind of headed up the Passion Conferences. So she pulls a couple of DVDs off of her shelf in the unit. She said they were just Louie talking. They were sermons on DVD. I could not believe that Fruitcake had <laughs> sermons on DVD. <laughs> but I agreed to watch anyway, not like I had anything better to do. So the first one we watch is called Indescribable. And this Louie guy talked about God differently than I've ever heard before. It was kind of weird. He made it sound like God was for everyone. He made it sound like the God that created the universe really cared about all of us. Then when that was over, Fruitcake asked me what I thought. I told her I did not buy it. I told her that God is not for people like me. She asked me if I wanted to watch another talk, a.k.a. Preacher Man. I just said, whatever. Again, I had nothing better to do. So we watched one called Passport. In this one, Louis talked about how Christians did not have to hope for the best in the end, that people did not have to do enough good stuff to get to heaven. It made sense. Pretty weird, huh? Then Louis started talking about grace and how God is a loving and forgiving God and that he wants to forgive us. It all made sense. I could hardly breathe, though. Seriously, I was sitting, and oxygen was not flowing through my lungs the way it should. The DVD ended, and the fruitcake just looked up at me. I was crying and trying to regain control of my lungs and gather my thoughts. I asked her if what he said was true, that because of grace, God could love me, that God could even love the screw-ups. She said yes. It sounds so easy, but all we have to do is ask Christ to save us, and he will. I've heard of salvation my whole life, but never agree with the whole deal of all I have to do is ask, and everything would be okay. But then Fruitcake explained, that is where grace comes into play. She said it was because God is such a gracious and loving God that he forgives, that Christ took care of everything on the cross. And he did not just die, but most important, he rose again, Easter. And that Christianity is the only religion where we get to worship a God that has walked the earth, died, and rose again. So there on my couch in my living room, 
where a lot of S-H-I-T has gone on, I decided I wanted what Fruitcake had, that I wanted what Jacob, Jeremy, Mom, and Jeff all had. I wanted grace. So I asked Jesus in my heart. I asked him to forgive me for all the mistakes I'd made. I told God that I knew I had messed up a lot, but if he would take me, I wanted to be a Christian. So there you have it. I am a Christian. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders and I can breathe again. I feel like everything is going to be all right. I feel like I've found something I did not even know I was looking for. I know all this sounds crazy and I am sober, I promise. (laughs) Fruitcake said that she's been praying for me since the first day she moved in and asked me if I was a Christian. Then we got out the ice cream. I'm going to get fat with fruitcake around. (laughs) Isn't that powerful? 14 days from I don't want a thing to do with God. I don't believe in God. I don't ever want to go to church again. I want grace. I get it and I see it for my life. Don't ever count God out. Because you know what I'm coming to discover? Most of the people that I talk to in life who say they don't believe in God, it's not that they don't believe in God. It's that they think God doesn't believe in them. And their defense mechanism is, well, if he doesn't believe in me, I'm going to not believe in him. And that's how I'm going to work my way through this. She found out different. Can I just read you a couple of tiny short ones and then close? January 28th, so I wrote an email a few days ago to Louis Giglio, the sermon guy on the DVD. He wrote back, that is crazy cool. I also drove to Jacksonville to tell Mom, Jeff, and Jacob that I am a Christian. Mom cried and said she was so happy that I made that decision. Jacob and I went running as well and just did a light jog so we could talk. He was also pretty stoked about me learning about grace and stuff. Daddy told me I've gone crazy, but he loves me anyway. That is daddy's way. It will take him a long time, but Jacob says if I pray, God can use those prayers to soften daddy's heart and maybe he will become a Christian too. Guess what? Louis Giglio put my email on his blog that like a ton of people read and it got a lot of really nice comments. It was pretty cool. So much I want to write, but I need to get on my British lit paper. This class may be the death of me this semester. I really want an A. So Krista was listening to Louis' podcast, and he read my email on that as well. I cannot believe how many people are hearing about me becoming a Christian. It's crazy, crazy stuff. (laughs) And the last one, February 8th, I went to a Bible study with Krista tonight, and that was actually kind of fun and cool. Everyone was like, hey, Ashley, and did not make me feel like all awkward and stuff. It was like I belonged there. They sang some songs which I did not know, and everyone else did, but it was cool. My favorite, I came home and looked up the lyrics. Here they are because I love them. I don't know why, but I started crying when they were singing it, and I just wanted to lift my hands like they did. I did not, but I talked to Krista about it afterwards. She said, that's just a way of worshiping God. Jesus did take me just like he found me, with all my failures and my screw-ups. He loved me just like I am. He's shown me so much compassion and mercy, and he all caps loves me. That just blows me away, you know. And then she changes color again, (laughs) and in the red she writes the lyrics to the song, and I'd just like to read them all for you. Most of you know this song. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, a kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. My Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever the author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. 
now I surrender. And she writes the bridge to this chorus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King, Jesus. There's a lot of miscellaneous last semester of college business. And then she writes on April 28th, Daddy and I went to the BMW dealership and ordered me a new car. (laughs) (laughs) Which should be in at the end of June to be delivered to the San Francisco dealership. That's where her job was. I love my daddy and he is so proud of his princess. Jacob, Stephen and I went surfing today. Well, Jacob and Stephen surfed. I laid on the beach and worked on my tan. I need to look great for graduation night picks. Tomorrow I'm driving back to Gainesville after church and sushi in Riverside. We're going to Sushi Cafe. And they did. Went to church, worshiped God, went to lunch, had sushi. Headed back to Gainesville and at 3 o'clock Ashley had an accident and... They never could stop the internal bleeding that night to do the surgery that would have saved her life. And there's nothing written on the next page or any of the rest of the pages in the journal, which I only have, by the way, and have been holding for two weeks now because of her dad, Mike, who has become a friend of mine through her death. And he wanted to find out who is this DVD guy, who is this Louie guy that my daughter talked about. And we became friends via email and email every week and have since then. Some of you remember Mike from before and you're going to ask. And um, in his own words, after listening to one of the earlier talks, he said, Louie, I don't know if you're going to get your bow or not. And I said, well, we're uh, stuck together, me and you, because of how much you loved your daughter and how much... Your daughter's life has impacted my life and the lives of many people around this world. And bow or no bow, um, I'm your friend. He means so much to me. And I, I, I sent him an email and just said, I'd really love to borrow the real journal. Because in January, he sent me an email and he said, you know, you keep saying, Louis, that you wish you knew my daughter. You wish you knew my daughter. You wish you'd just know my daughter more. And so turns out, Louis, my daughter was a journaler and her stepbrother, Jacob, um, he typed out her last journal from October to the day before she died. And I've attached it to this email. And I just sat and read, can you imagine reading that for the first time? I just wept when I read her story of coming to faith in the grace of God. And I said, Mike, please. And went to her mom and her stepdad and her brother, Jacob. I said, can I please read some of this to the students of the world? And they kindly agreed. And so I've been sharing her story with people on every continent on this planet, with students all across this nation and all across the world. And as we came to this talk, I said, Mike, I really love to borrow the journal. Could I just maybe borrow it for a day so I could actually read out of it? And um, he said, you know, we've been talking, me and Jacob, and I know your birthday is coming up. This was a few weeks ago. And he said, we want you to have Ashley's journal for your birthday. We want to give it to you. And we know that, um, we know she would want you to have it. And she would want you to share it and share her story with the whole world. And it's a story of grace. It's a story of a God who did what we can't do. It's a story of God who took all of our wrong and put it on his innocent son and took all of the innocence of his son and put it into the account of the people who put their trust in him. And if you're Krista today, if you're fruitcake and you're here today, don't count God out. You don't know what he's doing in the lives of the people that are right around you and you don't know how close they are to wanting something in their lives that's true and real. And if you came today and you're Ashley, oh my, how could you not know that there is a God in heaven who loves you so much? And his message to you today, I was in the world, in this same world, in Jesus Christ, reconnecting the world to me, and I am not 
counting your sins against you today. The story today is even for the screw-ups. It's even for the mess-ups. It's even for people like you, and it is powerful, and that's why it's called Amazing, Amazing Grace. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your power to save. Thank you for your willingness to come and step on this planet. Thank you for your willingness to rescue us out of our mess and to give us a brand new life. I thank you today that you are mighty to save. There is no one too far away. There is no one too far gone. There is no one whose life is too messed up for you, Jesus. And we celebrate today that all of our mess-ups were what messed you up on the cross so that we could have a new start and receive mercy and kindness and forgiveness from God that would change us and make us yours forever and ever and ever. God, thank you for Ashley. None of us would have wanted what happened to her to happen and all of us continue to pray for her family even in this day. But I thank you that though she only walked with you three months, Jesus, and only lived 22 years, that her life is counting today, that her life is making a difference today, that what you did in her is echoing out to the nations and to a generation today and changing people's lives by causing them to see that everyone can come home and everyone can be home free. And we praise you for that, Jesus. You rose and conquered the grave, and we celebrate you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's sing together. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing, the mercy for all me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Failures Feel my 
My God is mighty to sing. He is mighty to sing. Mother, you 